Welcome to the Beauties Podcast, where we talk about everything you need to know about women's sports. From the grassroots to the pros, we got it all. Today on the show, we have Jacqueline Hawkins from Women's Hockey Life, and she talks about the recruitment process and tips for all female athletes. Here are your hosts, Addie and Cowie. Right today on the show, we have Jacqueline Hawkins here, president and founder of Women's Hockey Life. She knows it from top to tail of everything with hockey, University of Connecticut Huskies, D1, Boston Blades with the CWHL, played in Switzerland as well, and has twins. So in her bio, and I want to start off with a story with you, Jacqueline. It says that Women's Hockey Life began over a slice of pizza in Switzerland. So uh, a story to go along with that one? Of course. There's always a story with everything, right? <laughs> yeah, I was playing over in Switzerland with the, the ZSA Lions um, after playing at UConn and then coaching there for a year. Oh, gosh. I'll try to make the long story short. But basically, when I was a senior at UConn, um, they had a Frozen Four Skills Challenge. So you got voted to go be a part of that. And the sponsor was Bauer. So Bauer would then hook everybody up that went with equipment and just swag and more stuff than we needed. The chairman of Bauer at the time was a guy named Graham Browston. And he obviously came and said hi to everybody. He sat at my table. We probably talked literally for five minutes, maybe 10 minutes amongst everybody. Commonality between the two of us. He went to Concordia. My brother went to Concordia. So whatever, quick conversation. Fast forward, I guess it's a, two years, and I'm in Switzerland, and our men's team is playing an exhibition game against the Chicago Blackhawks. So the Blackhawks flew over to Switzerland to play. They had to get some bodyguards for their VIP section, so, you know, that was me, naturally. My roommate and I, <laughs> we were the big bad bodyguards for this VIP section, and Graham walked by, and I was like, that guy looks familiar, but I couldn't place him, I couldn't figure it out, so I just went up, and I was like, hey, you look familiar, but I can't figure it out. Long, again, longer story shorter, or whatever that expression is. I'm bad with expressions. Um, we ended up putting two and two together, and I was like, no way. So he's like, what are you? And Shazi, I met a Shaw, played at BU. She was my, my teammate roommate over there. He's like, what are you guys doing tomorrow night? Let's go grab some dinner and catch up. So we went for dinner the next night in, in Switzerland, in Zurich, and we were just talking about, okay, what's, what's next? What do you want to do after you play? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I'll probably get into coaching maybe, but I don't know what else is out there for me. Right. I just love the game of hockey. I want to stay involved. So basically, we kind of came up with the blueprint for what is now women's hockey life. So he kind of gave me some ideas like, why don't you start a blog and talk about your experience playing in Switzerland so that people know that there are opportunities out there for you to play afterwards. And then you can get other people to write about their experiences playing overseas or in college or wherever. And I was like, that's cool. Why not? So that's basically how it started was over a slice of pizza in Switzerland and kind of took the idea and just ran with it. That's amazing. And it's <laughs> a little bodyguard in there, a little bit of everything in that story, which yeah, I absolutely love. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and it is interesting when you see these amazing companies that start up, it's generally with really good people having a conversation of how do we make things better, mm -hmm. right? How do we grow this? So for the, for our listeners that may not know, um, what women's hockey life is, um, do you mind just kind of sharing the whole scope of everything that you offer? Yeah. So basically, like I said, it started out with just me blogging about my time playing in Switzerland. Um, and then I started to, okay, let's build a website for it. Let's get more people talking about their experiences, highlighting maybe their team or different leagues and all that stuff. So it kind of just grew from there where we'd get more and more, I guess, bloggers to write about their experiences. So for a long time, it was that. It was just this, this information hub of women's hockey at all levels. Um, and then we've since branched out to now sell apparel. We've got apparel. So, um, you know, hats, sandals, hoodies, T-shirts, wh whatever you name, it's, it's there. Uh, again, just to give women something to wear that they're proud of, right? Like we've got, I don't even have one near me, but like hats with just the woman's silhouette on it, right? So yeah, it's, right. Hey, I'm, you know, it's not a male hockey player. There's a ponytail on it. Right? I need like, to place an order. <laughs> yeah. yes, Absolutely. So again, just like let's empower these girls by feeling empowered by wearing something that represents yeah. them. 
right? Yeah. Um, and then we, we also built another branch called WHL Academy, where it's an eight week online course where we help high school aged female hockey players navigate the whole college university recruiting process um, so that they can live out the dream that my entire staff and I have. Right. So we help them through that. What do you need to do? How do you do it? Um, you're freaking out. You don't know what to do. Lean on us. Ask us questions. Um, we've got a podcast as well. And there's a couple other branches in the in the works that uh, aren't there yet, but they will be soon. Amazing. How nice. Okay. Let's rewind for a minute. How was your recruiting bar- process? Oh, I a know. shit storm. It's 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 way harder than people think. And there and well, and, and uh, we're going back now, but like. I don't remember there being really any resource. Yeah. So for anyone who listens to this show that is in the process, and I think, Jacqueline, maybe one of the things, too, is, is that obviously women's hockey life is, is hockey specific, but you've got to be able to have resources that are transferable across other sports, right? The whole course is really a life coaching course. We just yeah. disguise it with women's college hockey recruiting process because we know that they're going to listen and they're excited and that's their future. For but sure. really, it's all about, you know, mindset. It's all about giving these young girls the tools to handle adversity, not only through yeah. the recruiting process, but life with, with teammates, with coaches, parents, professors, teachers, um, really kind of just turning them into these young girls who then become strong, independent women. That's, that's really the goal of the course. Again, obviously we're using hockey to, to get them in. Um, and the goal is to get them into university too. Don't get me wrong, but, and we do do that. Uh, that's kind of just the bonus from our side, which is our end goal, but, um, we just want them to be confident in who they are. And we, and Cowie and I've had so many conversations of how sports in general is just, a vehicle to get to the next phase where it's really the intangible characteristics of who you are, you know, how you show up, you know, we talk about like discipline, like teaching yeah. sports teaches you how to not be late to your first job interview. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I think about, I, I use sports all the time in my work life. I don't, I work in agriculture. So, um, I spend my time working with, to me w- is one of the best industries in the world with, you know, very grassroots people. And I use transferable things from sports all the time, whether that be in, you know, meetings with colleagues or interactions with end user customers, a level of confidence, um, a level of understanding, respect, you know, and I work in sales, respecting your peers. Man, sports is is one of my, yeah, I think it's taught me more than almost anything else in life, so. And when you look at that whole process, like you've been doing this for so long, Jacqueline, like, is there anything major that's changed throughout the recruiting process over, say, the last five years or so when it comes to actually, you know, signing with a university or, you know, is it kind of the same kind of things as you move through? Well, COVID has definitely put a monkey wrench in it. Um, oh, oh, that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Forgot about that. Did I, did I say that out loud? Should I? Uh, yeah. <laughs> masks oh, came so off weird. six days ago when we we're trying to forget it existed. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, COVID, I mean, that alone with in the NCAA side with them granting an extra year of eligibility, the rosters are just massive. Right. And that's going to have a trickle effect depending on, you know, do they take that fifth year or not? Mm -hmm. So like, we're still even dealing with, excuse me, players, you know, grade 12 right now where it's, there's just no spots. So what do we have to do right now? It's, we got to get creative. Do you want to do a post-grad year? You know, do you want to maybe take some community college courses um, and and play on a travel team as well to do that post-grad or, you know, it's, it's all about getting creative at the end of the day, if you want to play in university and the option may not be right there right now, it's okay. Well, there's always a solution. You may yeah. not like it, but at the end of the day, if you want to get there, we have to get creative and find a way to make it work. With um, For our listeners, could you just get into the nitty gritty of what a post-grad year is? Because I don't like, I know we have a lot of hockey fans that listen to this show, but I don't think that a lot of people even know that a post-grad is an option or even what it is. Yep. So like I said, you can opt to do that and basically take a year where you can enroll in university courses. Um, As long as it's part time, it doesn't affect your eligibility. Again, it's different for every league. So whether it be U Sport in Canada, um, ACAC out in Alberta, NCAA Division One, Division Three, or even ACHA D1 and D2. Tons of options out there. I just threw out a lot there. But um, 
every league has their every division has their own rules. But as yeah, basically, as long as it's part time, you're not affecting any eligibility. Um, and you can play on a travel team as well, a youth team as well, if, if that's an option. Again, they also may be oversized as well because there may be more and more people doing this, right? So, and in the States, a lot of the girls will do a PG year um, at a prep school. So they'll finish their grade 12 year, but then go do this post-grad year, which is essentially like a grade 13, um, and take uh, you know other classes or maybe redo some classes and get a better grade so that it's you know transferable even as college credit. Like you can take some AP courses in prep schools, um, in high school, even uh, where it can actually count towards credits at university. Right. And I think one of the biggest things that is important for people like you to, you know, for everybody to hear and see what you're doing at Women's Hockey Life is like nobody's path is the same. Mm -hmm everybody's and everybody thinks like parents are I know it's got to be this way I've got to take these steps and it's like let's all take a breath because (laughs) no no female hockey players path is the same right and everyone's sorry go ahead no no you got it no, I'm just saying that's huge. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it's so true. Like whether you're playing even on a boys team or you're playing um, in Timbuktu in the middle of nowhere and you're nervous about exposure and or you're, do I go to prep school or do I not? My thing is always if you're coachable, you're committed, um, you're decisive, you're willing to do whatever it takes, there's always a way. There's always a way. So mm-hmm. are there better positions you can put yourself in yes but if you go a hockey academy or prep school route are you now forking over 30 40 50k a year to do that if you can do it great absolutely but you don't have to and that's i think that's a huge thing that people need to understand and and know is it's really just about the exposure piece so if you are playing on a team where you know university coaches aren't coming out to see you those camps and showcases in the summer are very important then for you to get to those where those university coaches are going to be Right. Yeah, I think like so my wife coaches triple A hockey here um, in Manitoba. And that's the one thing that she's so adamant on every single year is, you know, they go to the Stony Creek showcase. They go to these places because and and I don't I don't know that necessarily. I think it's gotten a lot better for sure since you and I were even young. Yeah. Um, and I, I honestly do believe if you're good enough, if you love it, if you put the work in, th- your path will find you. Yeah. But it's it's critical. It's a it's a huge piece for them. And, and I, I, I do even back to your comment of, you know, my heart breaks a little bit for some of these girls who are coming out of a COVID year and trying to get into universities. We had a, a girl on the show last week with us who's a U sport athlete, plays at the U of R. And they had 14 rookies because of the mix of, you know, they're technically a mix of first and second year, but they're all in their first year. Yeah. 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 The landscape's rough. Yeah, and you talk about this, uh, like, sports psych, the mental piece of how important these, like, has there ever been a better, like, bigger time to incorporate that mental piece within all of your programming that you do? Because (laughs) if you think about all the hurdles, challenges, from not only the athlete's perspective, but from the parent's perspective, from the family's perspective, you go through your whole life thinking that, you know, grade 12, you're going to graduate and you're going to get signed. And then out of nowhere, your whole world is turned upside yeah. down. Which is why it's important to start early. Mm-hmm. And, and how early? How early? I was going to say, I don't, what am I about to say? I don't say it to make anybody nervous who isn't, who's past this point. But if you can start in grade nine, do it. Yeah. And it, it's just it, um, informing yourself, becoming knowledgeable about the process uh, so that, again, it, it's going to alleviate the stress that you feel down the road. So if you know everything you need to know, say, like you take our course, eight weeks, you know everything you need to do in the next four years. Mm-hmm. You can feel a huge sense of relief just because you know everything that's coming up, everything that you have to do, right? Is Can you do everything right away? No. I mean, the, the NCAA D1 level, coaches can't even talk to you until June 15th after your, your grade 10 year, right? But there's still so much more that you could be doing leading up to that so that you're not behind the eight ball, right? right. So when someone's listening to this and they're in grade 11 or grade 12, it's okay. Don't panic. Yeah. Don't panic. Like we literally had uh, last summer, 
a player, uh, she was in grade, she was in grade 12 and she was going to do a post-grad year because she had nobody recruiting her. Like everyone was full. She was a goalie. She's like, what do I do? What do I do? And I had had a phone call with them when she was in grade nine and it just didn't work out at the time, which is fine. But we kept in touch and they called, I think it was, it might've been right around the start, maybe April, May. And they're like, Hey, let's go. We want to get in the course, help us. So we got her in and she had, I think she had verbally committed to a, a hockey academy or prep school in the States, but she ended up signing with Elmira college and they just played, they just played in the NCAA D three, um, semifinals. And she was second team, um, all American. Like she crushed it. Right. But like she almost missed that opportunity. So again, if you're in grade 12, we can still work with you and we can't guarantee you anything, but there still are possibilities and opportunities. You just may be missing a a single piece of, of the puzzle, but Back to the point we were talking to earlier is everyone's process is so different. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Did you watch that? Uh, I saw you sharing about it. Did I you, was uh, nuts. I was like, <laughs> Addy, it was point one seconds. Point Literally. one seconds left. Gustavus then, yeah. tied it to send it to OT. Stop. Point one. Real. That was a championship no, game. Yeah. No way. Yeah. I'm like, That's that was incredible. in. That went in. Point one. Like, you can't even make that up. I they know, right? I yeah, know, they did end up losing. Unreal. unreal. Yeah, there's so much good hockey being played right now. It's insane. Like the Frozen Four has just been lights out. I know, absolute lights out hockey. Like, yeah, we'll have to throw that on a TV when we're done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. in an hour, I think. Duluth. And yeah, three o'clock for us. Four for you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Duluth and Ohio State going for the championship. You got any predictions there? I think Ohio's going to do it. You know what? I think so, too. I do. I, I'm, I'm going Bulldogs then. Yeah. Got to. <laughs> Got to. Addy and I bet all the time, but we don't actually bet. We just talk about betting, but uh, we got a bracket sitting in front of us here for some basketball stuff. So I'll go Bulldogs. I'm into it. I Fair just enough. feel like they came back in that game and they're just they're on a momentum train like they've never been on before in years I just I can't I can't imagine Ohio State getting that far and not getting it done okay I don't know I don't We're know like you just said though too like they can play from behind they're used to coming back and winning like that's a huge mental edge right there like I, you get down by a goal they don't freak out and the game's over it's like all right we've been here before let's do it yeah cool. yeah which going back to all those like intangible things that you talk about with you know being a, a using your hockey to your professional, like I still in my work life will get in pressure situations and feel like I'm in a game and not panic because I've had that experience in my life. You know, it's crazy how you can flip them back and forth so much. And so when it comes to, you know, the process and everyone's path is different. I know we, when we chatted before, we felt like we could do a whole episode on this, but do you have any key things for parents? If they, you know, they're starting to see a little bit of promise in their daughter and, you know, she's starting to get really excited about it. Are there, is there a couple key things that you'd, uh, you know, tell them? Make sure it's player led. Number one, it's got to come from the player. Um, I know parents so I'm a parent myself we have the best intentions but if if your daughter is not falling in love with the game doesn't love the game then she's not going to want to pursue it right so you've got to let her find her stride let her love the game so much that she comes to you and says hey I, I think I really want to play another four years in university like can you help me explore this what do I need to do right like I, I think that's that a advice that that goes maybe unsaid sometimes um it can't be the parent living vicariously through the kid it just can't because in the like we've like, we've dealt with players that have gone through our course that that's happened and they ultimately end up in university but they're not playing hockey anymore mm-hmm. yeah. and, I mean, should i be broadcasting that probably not but to us i'm like no it was awesome because again it's more about it's it's about f- helping them find their path and if hockey's not included that's okay but it's having the hard conversation with them of, are you truly passionate about this? Do you want to do this? Or is it because you don't want to let your coach down or your parents down? And for two or three of the players, that was actually the case. And they're like, I actually want to go to school and, and do theater. And <laughs> that one player is in university and she's pursuing a, a career in acting. 
And I, yeah. you, you know, you said, I don't want to, we don't, maybe you shouldn't broadcast it. I think we should broadcast it. <laughs> I think that's a thousand percent the message that needs to get out there. Um, cause we've all experienced it. I, we've experienced it when we were in the sport. You've now experienced, you know, Addie's experienced it a lot outside of the sport. I kind of experience it semi through um, the other half of my household as well, too, on a regular basis. And I think it's a really important message. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really yeah. Is. It's got, it has to be. And even when like Cowie and I are both coaching a spring team, to a, a peewee spring team which we're just jacked about but that that's our core value within it is they have to have fun when they're here if they're not having fun then we need to shake things up mm -hmm. because this is a fun time we want to get better and, and our goal is to progress and make them better athletes and and people and talk about all these things but at the core of it all we all have to be having fun right yeah. Oh, no, a thousand percent. Yeah. You just hit it about being a better athlete. Like you could play hockey year round if you wanted to. Like there's so many ways you can do that. But at the end of the day, to become a better hockey player, you got to be a good athlete. Yeah. yeah. Right. So play a different sport in the summer or the spring if you want to take some time off, like afford that time to miss the game. Because when you miss it, when you come back, you love it. And you're just you're so excited to just to get going again. Like. I don't know, like play soccer or baseball, like some hand-eye coordination, like that'll translate on the ice, right? Footwork. Sure. I don't yeah. know. You know what I mean? So it's, if your kid is feel like they're burning out or something, don't force them to do spring hockey if they don't have to, or, or okay, yeah, you're going the college route. You want to get exposure, go to one or two camps or showcases in the summer. You don't have to do one every single weekend because by right. the end of the summer, there's not the flip side of that is burnout. Right. And then the season starts and are you at a hundred percent? Oh, totally. And that's, it's like a whole other world because you're like, there is a perception in the hockey community of missing, feeling like you're missing it, feeling like you're missing out. Okay. Well, if she is on the ice for two weeks, uh, longer than me, then I'm two weeks behind. And you know, there's that there's all those perceptions and having a really broad base on what you know, being an athlete means when you get up to the higher levels at university, you, when you're warming up, you're playing soccer, you're playing football, yeah. you're playing ultimate, you're, you're playing everything but hockey, <laughs> yep. you know? So it's a very interesting flip. And it's a, what I find is a confusing time for parents because they're hearing all this stuff about not missing out, but then in the same token, they're still trying to give a well-rounded approach i guess right like yeah. it seems like it's a it for hockey specifically it can get quite confusing it absolutely can and i've got friends that have young kids and they're feeling that pressure already you know their kids are eight nine and ten and oh I, do i sign them up for spring hockey because you know so and so's doing it but like you know they want to maybe try softball or baseball and i'm like let them do what they want to do they're so young still mm -hmm. you know like let them play other sports and, and meet other people and you know, maybe find a different passion, who knows? But at the end of the day, like it's, it's having, I guess the, what's the word, not belief or like, like the knowing that what you're doing is right. Even if society and other families and like, are doing something different, you've got to trust your gut. Like if right. you don't, yeah. know it's right, you've got to stay true to your path and what you think is best for your kid or what you're like, if your kid is telling you something, you got to listen, right? Yeah. Don't are feel like out yeah are you a hockey mom your kids are six right you said yeah my son loves to skate but i mean covid is really kind of not allowed us to do anything yeah, last i guess fair enough oh so yeah. they're but they're they're into it a little bit uh, more yeah. so my son but just skating like neither are really into to hockey um yeah. at the rate they're going it's gonna be like rock climbing and art and music and cool. stuff i know nothing about and i'm gonna have to learn <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Get, comf get comfy being uncomfy, right, bud? Oh Gymnastics. I'm like, I, I still can't even do a somersault to this day. I'm like, you want me to do what? Yeah. I'm like, oh, you show me how to do that. We put our three-year-old in a gymnastics class, and I was just in awe of these human beings that were just throwing their body everywhere. I was like, holy man, this is oh, yeah. insane. But he oh. loves it, so that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can I ask you a question about your course? So you you said it's eight weeks long, and when yeah. when is it? Is it once a year? You can sign up whenever you want. Okay. So we don't have a hard start or end. Well, I mean, Perfect. it's eight weeks, but we've got different packages where you can stay with us for different lengths of time. Okay. Um, but you can enroll. It's rolling admissions, so to speak, um, whenever. Cool. Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah. And then so, so every every athlete, they reach out to Women's Hockey Life and then, you know, you say you meet with the families, find out their goals and then get them going in the course and you kind of have like advisors that work with them throughout the course as well and like kind of just giving yeah. them guidance. Yeah, so there's on whlacademy.com, you can book a call um, and you can't sign up on the website. And I do that purposely because just like you said, I want to talk to the players and the parents to make sure that I believe they're going to, the player is going to do the work because if I don't, I'm not going to invite them into the course and it would just be wasting their money, their time and our time. So they have to be committed and I have to feel that on that phone call. Otherwise the invite doesn't go out. Um, but once, you know, they're in the course, yeah, we, we do live Q and a calls every week, live mindset training calls every week. We do one-on-one -on -one calls. So they get to know all the coaches, um, unlimited email support. We do mock interviews to prep them for, uh, you know, conversations with those university coaches. We help them create the list of schools, send emails, um, find scholarships. If they go in the U.S., there's tons of them out there that aren't academic or athletic related. That's 100% up to the, the players to earn those. Um, but yeah, we, we literally cover everything. ACT, SAT stuff, um, NCAA Clearinghouse. I mean, there's a lot more rules in the NCAA, so I keep referencing that versus U Sport. Right. But uh, um, yeah, and, and, you know, we help if they want to play in Canada or the U.S., it's it's really up to them and us helping them figure out what that what that end goal is. What is that university goal? Like academically speaking, athletically and social, like we get to dream. You get to write down that dream school, even if it doesn't exist or it doesn't have a name to it. Um, and then we go out and help them find those schools that meet all of their needs. And really, that creates their first list of schools. And then we start contacting and it's a process of elimination. Hey, you don't hear back from them. Okay. This is plan B. This is what we have to do now. Still not hearing back. Okay, here we go. You got to know, cross them off your lifts, move to the next one. Cause at the end of the day, they're going to hear no more than they hear. Yes. And again, that's why the mindset piece, we, we couple that with that because we have to prep them for that. It's just like sales. You hear no more than you hear. Yes. Right. Well, Big time. Well, <laughs> Sorry, because I, I feel like that's a really important piece just to say it again, is that you have to, even though you're being scouted and you're still doing the work as an athlete within your team, you still have to remember that there's work to be done when it comes to the letters, the contacts, the commitment to the plan that you're creating, right? Like it's not, okay, well, I'm getting on the ice and I'm doing all this stuff. It's still okay, I still have to research schools. What do I care about? What It's like there's still a whole aspect of work that needs to go into it. And I think that that's forgotten sometimes in the way of like, I'm playing hockey and isn't this enough? And yeah. I think it's important for people to hear that it's not. And you have mm -hmm. to get out there and you have to do the work on the other side of it to find those avenues, right? Yeah, because I mean, hockey is a big piece of that, that call university experience, but there's also the academic piece, like even campuses, like, do you want a bigger, big campus, small campus? You want to be in the city, the suburbs, does it not matter at all? Like, um, you know, it, the whole, the whole process is iterative in that it's always going to change. So like someone in grade nine listening to this being like, I don't know what I want to study. I don't know what I want to do. I don't, I don't care about that. That's fine. We can still work with that. It will change over time as they maybe visit campuses or have an interest in a certain subject. But I mean, there's no judgment coming from me. I was in university and changed my major three times. So I'm like, <laughs> it's okay if you don't know guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's really okay. But just being, um, again, we're, we're not forcing, but we're just trying to help these girls figure out who they are through this process. Like what is important yeah. to you? What's going to make you the happiest when you spend four years somewhere besides hockey. Right. So it's something that they're like, oh, I don't know. I was like, that's why we're asking the questions. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's why we do this. Well, and there, and there's so many, like, I feel like to, you know, everyone or not everyone, that's not the right way to say it, but a lot of people have this vision of it's either, uh, you're either going to stay in Canada and play U sports or you're going to go to the U S and play. I, my kid's going to be a D one athlete. And you mentioned it earlier in the show. There are so many more avenues than just those two yep. that if nothing else, educate yourself on, on the options that you could have. Well, and there's a huge stigma too, with the ACHA of being club hockey in the U S yep. and I'm like, there's some schools that have scholarships specifically for Canadians because they know that the cost of tuition is crazy dollar, not included like the exchange rate, not included. Yeah. 
Um, but and they're they're treated just as well as some of the NCAA programs. I mean, you got to know which ones. But I mean, even at the D3 level, we had a player that was like, I'm going D1, D1 or bust. And then she toured some D3 campuses and she's like, that stick room was amazing. It's so cool. Like the facilities were unbelievable. Like she just didn't know because she yeah. hadn't seen it. And all she was basing it off of was someone else's opinion. Yeah. So yeah. that's another piece of like you got to get out there. You got to do your research in order for you to formulate your own opinion on these schools and, and the different levels. Yeah. And I think there's something to be said about when you go on your visits, if you, if in your gut, it doesn't feel right. It's not. Yep. Like there's something that you, even you just walk on campus and it's like, Nope. Yeah. This isn't what I thought it was going to be. And I think you have to listen to that, even if like, cause you say there's this prestige or this, you know, there's this stigma that I should be going here. They're the perceived best choice for me. And you get there and you're like, Ooh. Yeah. Well, how many, how many girls do you hear about going to the States that come home after a year? Yeah. Lots. Like lots of girls go to the States. They, they've, passed over so many great opportunities to stay in Canada, but just because it's going to the States is where you want to be. And they're on the first plane home Mm -hmm. (laughs) because it's just not what they thought it was going to be. Yeah. And part of that, I think we talked, so we've talked about this in a few episodes uh, lately, just that I, you know, my personal opinion is that U sports does a disservice to their athletes in terms of promoting and, and, you know, putting information out there, making information accessible. And that's one thing, this is back to that kind of sales comment that the NCAA has done an exceptional job of, of selling the hockey, selling the culture, selling the life, right? And so we have people here, I think, who, who underestimate the value of hockey in this country. Yeah. And you're, you're bang on on that because even if you just compare nationals to nationals, there's no comparison. Yeah. whatsoever yeah. and we have incredible athletes that should be promoted in Canada mm-hmm. for sure well when I was coaching at UConn we actually had a, a western Canadian player come and scholarship and all and after actually I don't even think she made it to the first year she went back home and, and played uh, I think she ended up playing with the Bisons actually and, and had an exceptional career and loved yeah. it and, yeah. and she should have stayed in U Sport. U Sport was for her. That was that was the right spot for her. But I think it was. I don't know. I should. I. This is my perception, my my opinion. But it was. Oh, but it's NCAA. <sighs> I gotta go. Yeah. Oh. You know? But really, it wasn't. That wasn't the right for her. Yeah, not the right yeah. fit. U so Sport I has think a programs. Yeah. Yeah, and so doing. I think the the research portion of it is what I think parents. Um, you know, really should dive into, especially, you know, maybe if your daughter isn't a hundred, you don't know exactly where she's going to go, but still Mm -hmm. having that knowledge and that understanding, because that's to go off your point, just one more time, like there's the perception we've all been at the rink where we're sitting in the lobby and everyone's talking D1 this, D1 that, when, you know, they're not looking at the whole spectrum of what could be offered for their daughter. Because there is a lot of girls that um, I've trained in the past that should be D1 athletes or should had opportunities to go D1, and they ended up in the East Coast. They're at UPEI. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, this is my vibe. That's I'm a PEI I mean. gal. Yeah. This is my vibe. This yeah. is where I want to be. And it's like, let's go. PEI yeah. is lucky to have you. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> well, know, that- but it factor you guys are talking about with getting on campus and you just yeah. feel it right it's the yeah. emotional part of the decision and that's super important it's not just logical <laughs> you know like putting uh, numbers beside what's important it's you got to combine the two yeah. really do. some people are nobody. they want to stay close to home that's fine yeah yeah well, that's that's very very true honestly and Have you, over the last couple of years, like we've been talking a little bit about like the PHF and the PWHPA, has that, have you kind of helped people navigate or players navigate that process as well? Like if they've gone through your program and then they move on and now they're looking for that next step? Yes and no. So for that, it's a little bit harder because you kind of almost get drafted um, or sought, I should say, because... I mean, you go to their websites, there's nowhere to really say, hey, I want to sign up for a tryout, right? Mm. Um, but on the flip side, like if, if we're talking going to play in Europe, yes, we do help with, with players going, whether it be to, to Russia or um, 
you know, Switzerland, Finland, Sweden, even Australia. There's lots of opportunities out there that we can help with um, as far as overseas. But I'm hoping for one league here in North America soon. <laughs> We've said it on the show before (laughs) about 71 times. We are very vocal. (laughs) Everybody has. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And that one. A couple six. Yep. Yeah. (laughs) Hopefully, hopefully that's coming full force here in a little bit for sure. Because, and that's the overseas piece, because I feel like there's that piece of parents when their kids are younger and they're getting to the university, but now like the conversation of where they can go after that I find has become a very big topic as well. Yeah. Which is a huge push in the right direction. Well, you know, you, Addie and I have talked about, um, life through hockey. We talk every day, it seems. And (laughs) one of the comments I made to her was it wasn't even a consideration for me, quite honestly. Um, it was just, because there wasn't that great of viable... I mean, there was options to go to Europe, but I found a job two weeks after I graduated from university, and then I just started my life. Yeah. And I'm so happy to see now that there are... You know, you you named them. What did you name? Six countries in Europe? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's, there's even more. Like, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so yeah. there there's so many more avenues. We've got, you know, the PHF, PWHPA. If those are avenues people take, hopefully those... Amal- no, I don't even want to call them amalgamate. Hopefully we end up with one single viable <laughs> option. It'll happen. It'll happen. It will unless- happen. I know it will. But yeah, even just the opportunity to play overseas, like postpone life for a year. You got the rest of your life to live life. You know, like if you, know. you can't do it and keep playing, why not? I didn't even know it really existed even after I played. Like I, I coached uh, UConn the year after I graduated um, and then went to Switzerland the following year because an opportunity presented itself, but it wasn't even on my radar. So again, it's just the knowledge of what is out there. Mm-hmm. Like if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. yeah. Can't know what you don't know. That's right. And, and we have so many uh, like buddies that have had phenomenal careers. Like I always yeah. think of Erica reader who I was able to coach is at Moto and is just living the best life as a pro hockey player. Yeah. Like it, there's so many options. We've also seen girls go to the PHF that love it. PWHPA, we had Liz Knox on. Like there's so, so many opportunities for girls past even university now that I feel like that, that conversation shifting is just massive. Mm -hmm. Like how awesome is that? Like we didn't have that when we were growing up to look up to. It was Olympics, Right right? Yeah. You saw it like, every four years. That yeah, was we it. sat for four years and waited for the games Honestly. to come, and that was it. So, well, and you think about, I uh, man, I, yeah, I didn't. There was no girls team. Yeah, yeah. I drove an hour and ten minutes for the closest girls team when I was yeah. a kid. Yeah, which I love the, the, I love the shift. Promising. Like I, I know there's a lot of uh, maybe critics are negative hey there's sh- this needs to be happening quick or whatever but i'm like we've we've come a long ways and i think patience yeah. is a huge thing that people sometimes forget and we need to have of it, it we can't rush this because when you rush it it doesn't work yeah like mm-hmm. we've got to be thorough in how we build this and do this and you know it's it's i don't know what's going to come of it but i i hope as far as the professional league here it's there's a feeder system that leads to it yes that's, exactly that's exactly that's a great point right that is you exactly know. right. Did you end up going to the PWHPA showcase in Ottawa? I didn't. I wasn't able to. Um, life as a as a single mom kind of took priority, but uh, yep. that's that's how that, those are my priorities. It's always family first. But unfortunately, I couldn't get to it. But uh, I mean, I know there'll be more opportunities. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. It was. Uh, they said there the the crowd was unbelievable, and it's become one of the, the places that they definitely want to return to because. It was awesome. You know what? We Okay, so we're just going to find you a babysitter for a weekend because Addie and I, have you seen this thing, the sports bra in Portland? Oh, yeah, you're coming. No. It's a, it's a this girl's opening up a, a bar. It's called the sports bra. All the TVs are dedicated to women's sports. And if there's not women's sports on, they're turning the TVs off, right? I and did so, see something about that. Yes. Yeah. And so Addie, I'm like, okay, you're booking a babysitter for a weekend. We're hopping a bird and we're going to have some brews at the sports bra in Portland. I would love that. There needs okay. to be more of those popping up all over. I know, right? Exactly. And I think That's- it's going to be one of those places that once you experience it, you're like, oh my God. 
Well, I was yeah, seeing I that too. This. Like, what kind of itch is that when you go there? Like, Addie and I have talked a lot about how hard it is to, you know, you want to invest your time in watching women's sports, and it's extremely difficult. You know, yeah. right? It's super yeah. freaking hard to do. Yeah. And you, you, we're going to go there, and then we're going to be like, what now? What? I got to move to Portland. <laughs> well, <laughs> guess we're moving to Portland. Yeah. See Did you, we Olympics. all just become roommates? Yeah. <laughs> I'm into that too, buddy. That's right. That's right. Because oh, it's, uh, and it was cool because we, you know, Cowie did a cool thing and put it on social media that we were going to go do an episode there. And they reached out to us right away. And we're mm-hmm. like, what you guys are doing is awesome. We'd love to have you. Every And I'm like, oh, my God. And they're the nicest people. I know. <laughs> so we have to record before we get too many beers. Yeah. Beer yeah, cap. Might, <laughs> might, uh, might be uh, or different. It may, may not go on air otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Just keep that for the archives. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, Jacqueline, this has been an absolute pleasure. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, of we're serious about Portland. Um, <laughs> but and uh, just the roommates? and the roommates. That's right. There's a couple spare rooms in this house. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up here, can you just tell everybody where to find you? What's the easiest way to contact you? How people get into your course? Yeah. So, I mean, womenshockeylife.com is the main website. Um, all of our branches are hyperlinked from there. So that might be the easiest. As far as the course, it's whlacademy.com. Um, and again, there's, there's a million ways to contact us once you get to that website. But uh, we're on social media. All of our websites have our social media on there as well. So best bet would probably be go to the website. Um, or you can always send an email to info at whlacademy.com. Easy for me to say. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we're on social website. It it's, should be pretty easy once you, you get to the website. And you guys got a ton of good resources on your Instagram, too. I love to follow you. Thank you for all that you do with that. So I encourage everyone to go and find... Um, you on social media um and and reach out i know we're gonna have a lot of people here in this province that you you might be getting uh in touch with because i think you're yeah. a resource that we've been missing so well, i appreciate yeah. you. i appreciate you guys uh, having me on here i think we might need to do this again absolutely oh, it's absolutely. been a slice it's been awesome so yeah before we wrap up just want to take a second to acknowledge you and thank you for everything that you do for female athletes it's amazing and something that is definitely needed. So thank you so much for being you and your time. And we would love to have you back on the show. It's a date. I'm in. (laughs) Thanks so much, bud. Have a good one.